7 o'clock. I'll call the select board meeting of Tuesday, August 27th, 2024 to order. Note this meeting is being televised, streamed, or recorded by Born TV. If anyone in the audience is recording or videotaping, they need to acknowledge such at this time. Use of flash photography during select board meetings is prohibited. Uh, did you, Michael Roush acknowledged he is recording. If anyone from the public wishes to access the meeting, they can do so by calling the following conference line, 1-929-205-6099. The Zoom meeting ID is 874-1275-2272. The password is workshop, <laughs> all uppercase, W-O-R-K-S-H-O-P. The Zoom chat shall not be monitored. Participants who wish to speak must raise the hand icon until the chair asks them to unmute. <coughs> All items within the meeting agenda are subject to deliberation and votes. The meeting is um, called to order an open session. Moment of silence to recognize our troops and public safety personnel. <coughs> and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, would someone like to read the select board vision? I'll read the vision. Change. Born is a proud community that embraces change while respecting the rich heritage of the town and its villages. It is a municipality based on strong fiscal government with durable economy that recognizes the rights of all citizens, respects the environment, especially the coastal areas of the community and the amenities that it affords. Born embraces excellent education and offers citizens a healthy, active lifestyle. Thank you. And the mission? I'll take the mission. Melissa? One will maximize opportunities for social and economic development while <coughs> retaining an attractive, sustainable, and secure coastline and environment for the enjoyment of residents and visitors. Through responsible and professional leadership and in partnership with others, Bourne will strive to improve the quality of life for all residents living and working in the larger community. Thank you. Uh, community shout out and recognition. Um, I actually have a community shout out to the Pocasset Water Quality Coalition. Um, I went to their annual meeting uh, a couple Saturdays ago and they had some great speakers talking on the issue of water quality. Um, so they've really done a lot for education, but they've also done the rainwater, uh, rain garden project um, through the SNEAP grant. And they're also working with the Department of Natural Resources to see 200,000 oysters. Oh, wow. um, and so that's a really great project that they're doing too. And I just want to thank them, all the members and Keith Barber for all the work that they do for helping water quality in the area. Yeah, I actually had a community shout out. You first. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> um, I just wanted to recognize all the first responders and the town people that had to respond to the accidents we've had, especially over the last couple of weeks. It's been a tough summer for everybody and it's really, you know, tragic at the same time um, but yeah thank you thank you uh, for me um, I was I volunteer with the chamber um, on Thursday nights during the concert season and as part of uh, being there I had people come up to me and say thank you for the, uh, the way that the flowers are being maintained up and down Main Street and the park and also down by the um, the clock outside here, but the one thing that they really talked about was the black barrels that were instituted by our, our, our truly assistant town administrator, and, um, and the fact that um, you know that, that the files are looking better, they're looking greatly maintained, and they want to say hi to you know thank you to the volunteers that do it, but also I didn't realize that uh, facilities or the DPW goes out and waters them every Friday, you know, to keep them filled. So. Uh, you know, everybody's everybody's doing their small part to beautify this village, and I really appreciate it. And, it was, and it's nice to hear it, because uh, so I usually hear complaints from people when I'm there on Thursday night, but to hear something nice, it's nice. It's nice to give it back and let them know that. Thank you. Thanks. 
and Marie. <clears throat> uh, shout out to the Valley Farm Community Farm in their first uh, annual Monarch Butterfly, Monarch Butterfly Day. Day. I was in attendance. What a fabulous event! Yeah. Um, and um, it was in part sponsored by the Board Community Engagement Committee. So to, to help them uh, get it to fruition, and it was a great day. They did a fabulous job with um, education and um, crafts and a fun day of activities. And the release of the monarch. And releasing the monarch butterflies. <laughs> I want a coffee basket. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so many coffee lovers. <clears throat> nice basket. <laughs> Free gifts well, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I should, you know, I know it's part of my committee report, but I, I really want to send a shout out to the MC3 committee out at Otis. I was, I'm unable to get to those meetings because they have a conflict every time they have them, but they do some amazing work over there, General Foe and um, Paul Rendon, and they just, they, they do amazing work, and they had some presentations that I was going to mention that they did uh, at the last meeting, but I just want to shout out to them because it's meaningful work that they do, and, and they're important. Their meetings are very important. I always feel guilty when I can't be there, but um, it's important to let them know that we appreciate the work they are doing. So, mm. thank you. Shout out to MC3. Uh, <clears throat> next item is public comments on non agenda items. Is there anyone signed up for a public comment on non agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, consent agenda. Consent agenda this evening is to authorize the town administrator to execute the uh, C CVEC documents to end the solar agreement for the board middle school roof array. Uh, B, ban a request to the board and recreation department to promote trunk or treat. And C, appointment of election workers until June 30th, 2025. Motion to approve the consent agenda dated August 27th, 2024. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Anne Marie. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous, 500. Events and licenses. <laughs> uh, <coughs> discussion, possible vote on special event. Fishing for the Mission 22, Clause for a Cause, October 12th, 2024, as conditioned by departments. Harold, you can unmute. <laughs> I am here now. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you. I'm, not, I'm not the best at computers. So <coughs> That's okay. I've been up since 4 a.m. working, so I can't have everything in, so <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so um, can you just, uh, we've gotten some supplemental information in our packet tonight, including a site plan uh, for the use of the park. And there are going to be two porta potties um, added, but the um, the bathrooms at the Army Corps are still the are still open. Um, so uh, are we? Ch we've already have we we've already voted the one day liquor license, or are these all, this is all changing the use of the Buzzards Bay Park, the one day liquor license, and the one day entertainment license that were approved for Taylor's Point Marina and changing that approval to Buzzards Bay Park. That's is correct. that correct? Yes, that is correct. So we basically switched everything over. Just, we're not going to have a, a tremendous amount of people. First year events, we try to keep under 200. So we and we opened up sales for only 175 for the whole event. And uh, the entertainment license will be for uh, just two acoustics that will play in the little uh, gazebo and then Similar to our spring fling uh, black sea bass, that was a very big success with about the same amount of numbers. We're gonna stone path, which is all safe certified, NTIP certified, will block off the pavilion. Similar to last time, which was a huge success with no issues. So um, it's been very similar to that event. Like I said, we're keeping our numbers down. So um, once the tickets are sold out, there will be no more tickets available. For first year events, we do like to keep them somewhat small so we can make sure we can handle it all and you know we already sold out most of the tickets for this event so um yeah so any questions you might have but uh we're going to keep it small and, and intimate and uh, just to raise money to keep supporting our operations across the street at 47 main street we're, we're doing some amazing things so and no, nothing's really changed besides that any questions from the board there are any tented structures right uh, excuse me i'm sorry no no tented structures no tents on the grass? Uh, as, at this point, no, we're, we're not planning that. We're just hoping for good weather. 
like I said, it's only for 175, so between the pavilion and uh, UMass Dartmouth and Mass Maritime, they're gonna be providing a couple additional areas for seating, which we'll have off those grounds within 24 hours of the event, actually same day. So uh, we're, we're not planning on any tents at this time, um, just anticipating great weather. So there is an issue for using tents because they can't be staked because of the irrigation. So if you, and there are tent permits. So if there are gonna be tents, it's a, another step that you'd have to like work with the um, town administrator's office on. If you change your mind. Understood, okay. understood. And when would you like that in just in case, like, you know, the forecast, I mean, I think everyone could hit pretty much on a pavilion, but if we had a stake at 10, like what kind of timeline would you want? If we had that like two week forecast and so looking a little sketchy, what would you require from us for time to get those uh, ten, uh, regulations in? I'll I'll contact the building department and find out what their time frame is for that in coordination with DPW as to the ideal location on the premise. And okay. I will you do have a rain date. So your your date is the twelfth with a rain date on the thirteenth, right? Uh, we don't really have a rain day. It's kind of a <clears throat> we, we kind of keep our events because we're a nonprofit that this is the day and okay. not really refunds. But I, I think if we had it, we could pretty much. We, we could fit everyone under that pavilion if we had to. It's not going to be, it's mostly adults coming. It's not really a, you know, I wouldn't say family event, but. Uh, but I thought I the pavilion is the is have. the liquor area. Is the mm -hmm. pavilion the yeah. liquor area? So you can't. Yes. Yeah. So you have to limit the access to the pavilion to only the twenty-one and over. The yeah. twenty-one and over. Is it yes or no? Uh, no. It has. They have to be identified. The people have to be oh, identified. But the is. area where alcohol is allowed needs to be roped off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but not everybody in tw has to be twenty-one in the area. In the area. Correct. Okay. okay. All right. So they could use well, we it. They could also That's do correct. special bracelets. And you know, I already talked to Mark St. Jean at Stone Path and. No matter what, if they already got a beer, he's going to check every single ID each time. But if we have to do a stamp or some special bracelet to identify uh, people over 21, we can definitely accommodate that. That won't be an issue for us. To, you know, and if you need us to set up an additional tent, we can do that too. So the pavilion is the alcohol roped off area, yeah. but it is open to people that are under 21. Y yes. Okay. Yes. It can be. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes, and there are tips to sip uh, tips certify certifications in the packet as well. Who will be on the premise at okay. the time of the event? Hmm. Madam Chair, yes, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the request of fishing for the mission twenty two clause for cause on dated October twelfth, twenty twenty four, as conditioned by departments for the use of Buzz Bay Park. A one day liquor license. Well, they don't have the liquor license, that has to be separate. I know that's right, but for the use of Buzz Bay Park. So the, the liquor license is under Stone Path, right? It, yes. It's included in tonight's packet that okay. in your in being considered right now. Yes. All three things. There's the use of the property, okay. the special we can one do day it for entertainment, one motion, okay. and the special ahead, one day liquor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So to finish the motion, we use the Buzzers Bay Park, the one day liquor license by Stone Path, Stone Malt Path, or whatever the name is, and the one day entertainment license. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Peter, second by Jean. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. You're all set to go. Just I, I, talk to Liz if you have to is. change your mind about a tent. Yeah, we, we'll let you know, and I just want to continue to thank you. And just if I have two seconds, uh, since we opened up this resource center, we've helped over 75 veterans get their benefits or increases to uh, the DAV partnership. We've taken over 250 veterans fishing. Uh, we've helped over $35,000 right now to give transitional grants to veterans in our community. So this is a tremendous support that you guys continue to let us do. And we will make sure to take care of that property and, and, and yield to all, you know, proper guidelines that you set forth. And I really appreciate, uh, I'm a resident of Buzzers Bay and I have my business here. So I, I really do appreciate the continued support. and. I, I, guys can make it down come down it's going to be a fun event so so where are the I tickets agree. being how are the tickets being sold so they're on our website fishing for the mission 22.org okay and you can access that to our events page and i think we got 40 tickets left or so pretty much sold out but 
if anyone wants an extra ticket, just let me know, and I'll, you know, we can accommodate. You guys are great to us, so you know, if you want to get through Peter, Peter, you know, Peter, and me and Peter know how to communicate together. So uh, if anyone can get through with me or Peter, he knows, you know. So uh, I really do appreciate everything you guys do for us. Uh, you know, we, we're giving great resources to uh, our surrounding communities in Buzzards Bay. So I really appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is discussion of possible vote on special event 25th <coughs> annual Chris Weatherby Memorial Toy Run on November 3rd, 2024, as conditioned by departments for the use of town roads and requesting a waiver of insurance requirement and adding the town of Bourne to existing waiver signed by participants. Good evening. Welcome. Could you please introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Tammy Baptiste. Um, my maiden name was Tammy Weatherby. I am the coordinator of the Chris Weatherby Memorial Toy Run, along with my family. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about the event? This or is, is to say? this is a motorcycle ride that raises mon money and funds for the children of Cape Cod and the islands who need some assistance. For the families who need assistance, we work in collaboration with the Boys and Girls Club who help provide toys to various charities around Cape Cod. This ride has been going on for 35 years. Uh, it was started by the Ladies of Harley, of which my mother was one of the founding Cape Cod members, and very active in that. And when she passed away, it was renamed in her memory uh, it, the last 25 years, we have been doing it. Um, it. We start at the Buzzards Bay Eagles Hall. We travel down Main Street, up over the Bourne Bridge. And then we take, now, we take the Shore Road to County Road to 28A. And we end our route in Falmouth at the Portuguese American Club known as the Navigator. Great. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> mm. Um, is there, are we all set with the request to waiver the insurance requirement? Yes. And you just want the motion to include both um, things so that the participants do the waiver. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? No, sounds great. I've yeah. heard of it. Yeah. Motion to approve the special event 25th annual Chris Weatherby Memorial Toy Run the, uh, scheduled for November 3rd, 2024, as conditioned by departments for the use of town roads and for the waiver, the, w the request to waive insurance requirements and to add the town of Bourne to assist in waivers signed by participants. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Anne Marie. Is there any further discussion? How can people get involved with it, like, or have, um, get information for? We will be based on the results of this meeting this evening, we will be putting together an event page on Facebook, um, which will provide my contact information that people can reach out to me directly. Um, they can also reach us through that. We'll also have one on Instagram, and um, which will again have all the information. They can also contact the Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. in Mashpee, and they will put you in touch with the proper person, mainly me, <laughs> <laughs> and that way, and we will take any volunteers. Weather permitting, it's a one day event. Um, there is no rain date. And we make sure that we let people know if the weather is going to be at, bad, bad, excuse me, be very inclement. Safety is always first mm -hmm. and carpool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Sounds like a great event. Thank you. Um, do we have a motion and a second? If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions. It's unanimous. You're all set. Well, thank, thank you, you all very much. much. Thank you for Good coming luck. in. Thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda is marijuana workshop application process and procedures for host community agreements. And then, depending on that discussion, discuss rescinding the marijuana application moratorium. So, who is going to walk us through all this information? So, I'd like to start if that's okay. That's fine. And I'd like to kind of frame, give you a brief presentation to kind of frame everything that's in your packet. And then Liz is going to also show you the work that we've done for the website. 
Okay. Um, and then if if we can kind of give you the presentation first, and then we can get into the discussion and questions, if that's all right. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so a couple kind of um, points that I want to make to begin with. So in your pa your packet is has the entire application packet that we've put together for tonight we are not proposing any changes to the social equity policy the grading matrix or the host community agreement template those have been previously voted by the board and they remain mm -hmm. as voted we just want to provide them but that's not what we're going to focus on um, tonight I want to focus on talking us through the process to solicit, accept, and review applications submitted by marijuana establishments who are seeking to enter into an HCA with the select board. A couple of things to keep in mind before we get into the details. First, all discussions, meetings, and negotiations will be conducted by the board in open session, not executive session. Secondly, no local fees will be collected for the HCA review and negotiation process. All costs, such as staff time and legal review, will be absorbed by the existing operating budget. Now that's for the HCA negotiation process. There may be other fees that are typical for reviews uh, and permit applications from the Board of Health or the Building Department, et cetera. Um, thirdly, no local license will be issued. The outcome of this pro application process that we're talking about tonight it is an HCA, if so deemed by the Select Board. The way this is set up based on our previous workshop discussions is that the select board itself, the five of you, will be sitting as the review team. Um, so based on those discussions and based on moving forward in that way, want, there will be no preliminary review of the submissions <coughs> by the staff prior to the select board receiving the information. So nothing will be pre-screened. Um, the select board will use the previously adopted grading matrix uh, to determine a numerical score for each application. The score that you determine should be based on the written application materials as well as the mandatory presentation that's required before the board. The select board member should remain vigilant vigilant, excuse me, vigilant and mindful about not receiving any information outside of the formal application process. And can I just, can we just pause there? I think we need to kind of think about this as being um, like the liquor hearing. So when you're in the liquor hearing, when the liquor license hearing, you have discussions in the open session in the public hearing but you're not supposed to be talking to applicants outside or mm -hmm. it's everything is done as a board in the open Absolutely. in the in yeah. the open yeah. so um i i just want to kind of yeah kind of get that sort of uh, well we can't act individually as anyways as board. right I i'm be, just um, that's kind of common you're, sense you're yeah, yeah. Transparency is important, yeah, and the right. full board needs to be. And, and that is like something that in the liquor hearing we were cautioned about, like yeah. not to. Uh, so sure. Anyway, sorry to interrupt, but That's I thought okay. that was an important point to kind of discuss. So all board members should receive the same information in the same manner and at the same time. If any individual board members have questions about their responsibilities as re as re sitting as reviewers, I encourage you to. T talk directly with town council as we are preparing um, for the presentation part of the process the board sh should take some time to consider and discuss three questions first do you want to set a time limit 
on each presentation. We don't have to answer these today, but, but I just want to kind of preview them for you. So do you want to set a time limit for each presentation? Do you want to identify any specific standardized questions or topics that the pre presenters must address at, as a part of their presentation? And thirdly, do you want to allow for public testimony or comments as part of your decision-making process? Or do you want it to remain a conversation between the applicant and the board? So those are three things that I'd like you to just keep in mind. Um, we have some time, obviously, before we get to that part that we can take some time to discuss those. Um, in your materials tonight, we have intentionally laid out <clears throat> really the most aggressive time frame for your consideration. However, if the board members feel rushed or would like to make revisions to these materials or would like more time for any of these steps, then we can do that and we'll just adjust the timelines accordingly. So the way we have this process laid out is the application materials can be made available <coughs> and advertised as early as August 30th with a deadline of September 25th for the materials to be returned to the town. We will also inform the Cannabis Control <coughs> Commission's Social Equity Program as to the availability of the HCAs. During this period where the applications are open, potential applicants will be able to submit questions to the town administrator's office. The, all the questions must be submitted in writing. If it is determined that a question needs to be answered, a written addendum will be prepared and issued in the same way that the uh, request for applications has been issued. So that information will be made available to all potential applicants. Applicants are responsible for checking to determine that they have responded to any addenda that were issued. It is important that all information requests be processed through the town administrator's office and that all information is shared consistent, consistently with any potential applicant to maintain a fair and equitable playing field. All applications received by the deadline can be available to the board members as early as September 26th, so you can begin your review of the written materials. Board members should complete a grading matrix for each application this review should be conducted independently and mem excuse me and members should not discuss their scores with anyone all all board members should have thoroughly reviewed all the written applications prior to the mandatory interviews the mandatory interview presentations in this version are scheduled for october 8th 9th and 11th between the hours of 9 a.m and 2 p.m each applicant will be assigned an interview time, and these will be open meetings of the select board. After the review process is complete, the board should develop a composite score for each applicant. The select board should anticipate entering into HCA negotiations with each of the three highest scoring applicants. Your materials are prepared so that the select board has reserved the right to deny all applications and not enter into any HCA negotiations if you determine <coughs> that to be in the best interest of the town. Any applicant who has a fully executed HCA with the select board would then be eligible to apply with the planning board for site plan review and or a special permit. 
And before we get into discussions or questions, I'd, uh, I'd also like to sh have Liz show you the currently unpublished website that will be made available as a resource to the applications when all of these materials are also available. And I would like to just take a moment to thank Liz and Maria for doing an enormous amount of work on this. So um, there's absolutely no way this would be pulled together without them. So I'm going to turn it over to Liz. Um, in your packet, as you know, um, you saw the uh, packet itself that is before you. Uh, there is also a table of contents of all of the documents that are listed in the packet. This will be provided on the website as well as a hard copy at the town administrator's office. Um, in that packet is the copy of the public notice that will be stamped by the town clerk as well as posted in the Bourne Enterprise. We have it scheduled tentatively for this current schedule for August 30th. So we've already lined everything up. But if, again, like Marlene said, if there's dates that you want to change um, and feel more comfortable with, we can amend that. Um, but once we've set those dates, then those dates will be stamped in here for the applicant to, to verify that we have been following through with all of our timelines. Um, there's an application of interest then a required documentation checklist and those two items are required to be included in the packet when they submit it along with the other documentation that's on the checklist also included is your social equity policy that you approved on july 2nd the licensing or excuse me the scoring criteria the draft host community agreement then we've also created a flow chart to demonstrate the process and then also frequently asked questions. So this is the entire packet itself. And then I will walk you through the website. <coughs> this is really good. Now, this website, let me um, just take a moment to remind everyone, this website is not live no. at this time. <coughs> Okay, so everyone is going to get to see the back end, the backstage <laughs> of the I website. Never had one. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> All right. So you're on the landing page here, and under, so you can see, um, hold on, I'm just going to close that out. Um, you'll see there is a button down here that is called the Mar uh, marijuana establishment information. Right now, we can't make any changes to that actual link because nothing's live. So right now, currently, that link takes you to actually just notification of your vote. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. However, when you go back to the main page, there will be that link will be active, but it also can be found under we created a department page, marijuana establishments. And this will be the landing page for the marijuana establishment um, for the process. And again, this is not live, <laughs> so the dates are subject to change. However, this will give you just a flavor as to what it'll look like. Um, so we've bold out and announced that you are currently accepting applications until a certain date. And then for people to learn <coughs> how to access or to how to apply, they can click right here and it'll bring up actually all of the documents that we just talked about, fees, and key dates. So these are all following the requirements that the, uh, the Cannabis Commission is requiring for the website, okay? Um, and again, these are also linked all on here for, um, for the viewer <coughs> to be able to look at. So you can click here for a packet or there is also an, um, uh, a disclaimer saying that if you need it printed out, we will gladly print it out at our office and pick it up and coordinate that. Um, but we also list right here the two that are required to be submitted along with the application documents. And when you click on it, it'll bring it right up to the actual documents itself. Okay. So the other thing that I'm really actually quite 
proud of is the flow chart because that took a little bit of time for us to um, to figure out but we were able we know that you like flow charts and visuals and so we put it together for everyone so it's here available on the actual website in a, um, a visual but then you also have a printable PDF version right here where it will bring it out um, for you and it literally goes through all these steps the whole entire process from start to finish and the shapes and colors actually dictate what role and who is responsible for the role so this nice. it'll show the applicant who's involved with how the state is involved how does it communicate to the town then what is the next step for the town and who's responsible for that it also includes um, reminders of the planning board process, potential board of health reviews, and sewer allocations, and other um, other requirements. Is there any? Oh, I'm sorry, not to ask questions. Okay. <laughs> I, I just I don't think there's any marijuana overlay district in a sewer in the sewer district. Is there? Oh, there is because there's there over is, by the, the rail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> so we've also included a timeline as to how the town actually um, was approved and <coughs> the process of this review and creating the process. No, it includes also links to all of your meetings that you included and the minutes of it, so they have access to that, as well as your July 2nd. And then if you take action tonight, we will include tonight's um, in the outline milestones um, we've also included resources and contacts and also helpful hints within the resource and contacts as to maybe what they might be looking for within each of those departments such as the certified abutters list or a property card for the assessor so we really thought very comprehensively as to how each department may be involved with assisting the applicant with information to to choose locations and go through the whole thing so they really put together a comprehensive package for you and also included down below, we have included all the state resources. Uh -huh. So the links to the Cannabis Control Commission, <clears throat> Department of Revenue, Public Health, and Environmental Protection. So on the main page, back on the Marijuana Establishment main page, all of that information is also on the contact list is right here and all of the links. So these all work when you click on them. But again, this is on the back end of it, so it's not live. So that is it pretty much in a nutshell for the website. Wow. Boy, that makes Very me love nice. our website so yeah. much more. <laughs> 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 I had a lot of terrible things to say, but it's looking, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Nice flow chart. Wow, that's, that's the best page on there. <laughs> <laughs> best I've seen. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <coughs> um, all right then. Well, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Marlene, Liz, and Maria for putting this all together and very completely and awesomely. So it's a very are. comprehensive yeah. <laughs> application process. Um, I'm going to start if there are there any questions or comments on any of the materials from the board. I just think they're like they're visually pleasing. I think it's just done extremely well. I'm really happy. I mean, if it's okay that I say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was and I think amazing. I yeah. think you nailed every mm. checklist for me anyway with respects to the regulations and the, the, that mm -hmm. that have been outlined um, by the CCC um, yeah. in this process, especially with social equity. You know that mm -hmm. so-called outreach that we have to provide putting it in the enterprise mm -hmm. making it certainly accessible um for for the user as well so, it's a lot and of just to be clear it's all coming in hard copy <laughs> yeah well there's <coughs> so there's six hard copy sorry. sorry sorry no i mean there for applicants wise it's hard copy you're not sending us electronic copies no it's so the, each applicant is res required to provide six hard copies. Correct. So one for each of you plus a file copy and a PDF. 
So we ha will have an electronic copy of each application, but there has to be six hard copies provided as and well. And they're responsible for providing yes. the PDF. They'll have yes. to scan yes. and, so, yes. and so, provide the PDF. So if you, if you look on the second, if you look on the public notice page, on the second page of it, Right, I, right, applications of, yeah. Yep, all, all submission, submission responses response. must include six hard copies and one electric, electronic copy of Should the we, following. Sorry. Should we say in PDF format there, or does that matter? Because... No, because it can be actually with a, um, a flash USB? Drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing I forgot to mention okay. to you and show you is we actually also created the pro a proposal page on the website so people in the community can actually see who has applied and the process that they're going through. So we used fake names, and fake addresses, everything. <laughs> we had fun creating them. Um, high Tide, <coughs> Bud and Bloom, um, the Chill Pill, and then this one which we activated so you can see what it would look like when it comes up is called the grass door and we linked um this page actually will show you the timeline that the application went through mm. and all of the steps and the dates that it completed so again there's nothing listed as far as the dates here but we just wanted to make sure that the community also can see the transparency um, mm -hmm. and each applicant can see and track things so so yeah. you what would you track in that like the, when it was received mm -hmm. you would go in there yep. when it's scheduled for presentation to the select board That's it correct. goes in there and then when we get notified <coughs> by the state and the process if it's okay. going before planning all of those things there are several communities that do this very similar and um, and we thought it was a very useful piece of information for um, people to access and also for staff to reference when they are talking mm. to um, your constituents and ask and answering questions so they can track it in real time there's also a requirement um, after the regulations have changed that we have to provide on the website the scoring of each individual applicant so after your review the after the, we do our composite your, score after you do your composite score it's only the composite the composite score will be there and an explanation in narrative form of the reasoning for approval or denial of each application so those are requirements in the regulations now that we have to provide the score for every application you receive and you essentially have to have a written decision letter for every application okay. can can we do it similar to what we did in the liquor license where we say based on the information provided in the presentation and the documentation that we made the decision i mean yes, yes. yeah you have to have some sort of basis for your decision and a better defensible decision because it can be appealed at some point and then if, it, if the council can't defend it without any basis behind it so it's like being on the zba or the plan board and you're writing a decision a special permit and you just got to write a defensible decision yeah. okay. so that's and why that's it's something we can work on between now and whatever we yeah, have well, those. that's at the yeah. end yeah, yeah. that's so at the have, end we can have another discussion about that or yeah absolutely um, are there any particular questions about any of the materials in here because I do have a question about something <clears throat> Um, it has to do with the in our packet mm -hmm. it's page 52 it's the application of interest to marijuana establishment and um, license type it says marijuana retailer MR or then medical marijuana treatment center dispensary only MTC and I was confused about the only because we have said that you could do both, and I thought that if you were a medical marijuana treatment dispensary, MTC, you would check that. And if you were going to be a mar marijuana retailer as well, you'd check both. No, you're right. We should strike only, <coughs> and then people should have the option to check both. To check both, sure. okay. Yes. Thank you. And my other question has to do with the <clears throat> HCA template. 
which yeah. is a template. It's a template. And by the time you get to your negotiations, there there will certainly be things that you might want to revise. So are they supposed to provide, I'm not sure if, are they supposed to provide us with a signed HCA as part of their application? Or no, 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 no. Of, okay. No, no, no. Okay. So, so that's just, that's the, that's just informative to them of what our template says. That's information for the applicant to understand that if they're selected as moving into the negotiation <clears throat> phase, this is the starting point for the negotiation. Okay. All right. I, that was unclear. So, um, that's, those are my only two questions. I think this, you did great work. Mm -hmm. Um, so anybody else have any questions about any of this? Before I open it up to public comment. Yeah, I think it's been addressed that I had concerns with. Really good job. Great job. Yeah. Mr. Stroney. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Steve Stroney, <clears throat> Monument Beach. Um, really outstanding work here. Um, uh, Marlene, Liz, Maria. This is, this is really, um, uh, uh, you know, it's it's a great process. It's fair. It's transparent. I spoke <clears throat> a few months back about let's do this. Let's do it right. And I have to tell you, I think we have set the standard here for what you know other municipalities should look at. Just last week in Taunton, they made two more licenses available, retail licenses, and they have to now go through this process of of you know putting the template together and scoring it and the social equity policy and everything. And, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to share this with the city of Taunton because this is, this is really outstanding. I'm, I'm, I'm just blown away by it. Um, very impressed. And all the work the board has done, particularly the administration, I think you deserve a lot of credit because um, it's just outstanding work. So um, I, have, I had a lot of questions coming in tonight, but uh, Marlene and Liz, I mean, they just ticked them off one after the other. Um, but I do have a, a couple of quick ones. Um, so we envision um, th the three highest scorers entering into negotiations with, um, with the town uh, in order to get an HCA, which is part of the process of, of ultimately open up a dispensary. Now, my question would be, what do we do about the person who scores in fourth place or fifth place? And I'll tell you the reason I ask is we know that uh, there's a six-month window. Once they get past the select board and the HCA process, now they go to the plan board. They may not get by the planning board for some reason or another. So rather than, you know, open this process up again, we have a license available, going through it again, do we let the, the fourth place finisher, if you will, step up into negotiations? And, and my suggestion would be that that would probably be the best, most efficient process. And you may have a situation where somebody scores in the top three and for whatever reason they withdraw their application. They say, listen, we don't like the way this is going with the town. Um, you might deny them. You might come in and say, listen, everything that, uh, that you've put forth uh, since we uh, entered into negotiations is just not working for the town. Um, I think it's very clever drafting um, that you put into the application process that ultimately at the end of the day, if it's not in the town's best interest, then you, you're not obligated to go forward. That's great language and it protects the town, which I think is, is great. So that's really the, the first question I have is what do we do for the fourth and fifth place? Do we let them step right up if, in fact, one of the top three drops out? I think it would be more fruit I think it would be a fit more efficient if we have the ability to uh, recall the other, you know, the fourth or the fifth place person if one of the top three falls out for one reason or another. Because I don't want I, to. I, I don't think we should set it in stone right now. I think that when we go through the process, we may have one, two, and three, and then four and five may be way like off. way off. So, so I think that's an option that we could entertain. We don't have to deny them. We don't have to re deny them their application. I think we. I think when we get to the decision making, that we make that decision. I mean, that's kind of what you usually do with an RFP, isn't it? You kind of. I I would not commit to, I would not commit to answering that question at this yeah. point. I would, you need to see who, who applies how, things, they, yeah. how things work. You need to see how much time has passed. You need to see if other things have changed. Um, and I would reserve your ability to make that decision 
in the future on whether or not you reissue an RF, RFA or if you decide to move forward with, you know. Or, or leave them open for. Or continue. leave them yeah. open. I, I think it's something we'll decide mm -hmm. when we go through the decision making process. It, and that makes sense. Yeah. It, it does. I just, I just brought it up because it might not be one of the things you think about and then you know, we don't want, I don't think we want to get in a position where the administration has to reinvent the wheel and go through this all over again um, because it's obviously put in a lot of hard work. Um, all right, that's actually, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Well, we have a process for a reason and we'll just let the process play itself out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. number four, I'm yeah. 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 I, I mean, yeah, we don't know. We don't not, know what. Not want to offer. Let's, let's go through our ratings yeah. and then see yeah. where we are. We could we'll, struggle to score if them. If we as do well, have a number though, four, number yeah. four could be really awesome, and we yeah. were like, "Oh, yes. that was hard." Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. that's that's why you look at it both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we uh, have enough. So, uh, anybody else have any questions, comments in the audience? Um, okay. So. Um, do you want a motion at a minimum to which? Well, I, before we, I don't want a motion yet. I want to discuss something first. We have dates right mm -hmm. now. The, yep. uh, October eighth, 9th, and eleventh. You said yes. yes for the interviews. For the interviews, are can are people willing to commit to those dates? Yes. Um, well, let me check around. Yeah. <laughs> That's the day after Columbus. I was going to say, is that Canada Thanksgiving? Day. So. Or the um, week before. <clears throat> Week before. Yeah. It's the week before Columbus Day weekend. weekend. Yeah, I can do those days. And the reason it's those dates is because I'm working around your town meeting, meeting. schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the Friday before is when the voter handbook has mm -hmm. to be sent to the printer. Mm -hmm. And the week before will be your last meeting with the warrant and your moderators meeting. And this will be in that gap between when the book is sent and town meeting. Is the when's the moderators meeting? The the Wednesday be prior to. Um, oh. The moderators meeting is. Day is the. Moderators meeting is October second. Okay. Um, so we're all we're all we're past the handbook. People's Day and the, the holiday is October fourteenth. Okay, so yeah. it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, uh, we will, these will be assigned to the applicants. Right, and we may need, need might not and end we up might need, so all we the have, dates. We might not need all this time. If we but have as three, condensed as possible as we can condense it. Right. <clears> and it depends on how much time we allot for yeah. each presentation. Yeah going to dictate how many how many applicants we how get. many applicants yeah. and the time we allot so right. right, so I'm, I'm not available on October 10th but it's 8 9 11 so that right. will work okay but what the important piece is this will be advertised if you decide to move forward tonight these dates will be advertised in the newspaper on Friday and we're committing to them now yes yeah, so for, for the full disclosure yeah. that they're responsible for having time to come on one of those dates mm -hmm. to yeah. be able to interview with us. Yeah. We're not holding up. We're not going to make another date available. Right. Those are the dates. If you want to do this, you have to be available on those dates. Right. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, so if there's no more comments from the board and no more comments from the public, I think we are ready for a motion. Uh, and now we're going to do it. I'll, I'll do one motion first, and that is to rescind. That is to re a motion to rescind no, them. Let's, let's vote the thing. No, and then vote the we'll application. Rescind. Okay. Well, then you want a motion to approve the process and dates as as in that packet for the marijuana uh, for the whole public hearings and as presented as presented. And the and use marijuana with one amendment. amendment. Yeah, with the one with amendment. The one with on the, the application. Yeah. As yeah. amendment. amendment of uh, yeah. Yes. Second. We will also fill in the website address yep. um, in okay. the notice, and the website will go live w on, Friday. on Friday as well. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, so, a motion by Peter, second by Melissa. This, um, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous.
And I not a motion to rescind the marijuana application moratorium. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Melissa to rescind uh, marijuana. Because it talks about the yeah. application of alcohol. Um, we're just going to strike the reference to marijuana in that policy because it, it, it is reference to um, alcohol. Alcohol, alcohol and others. So we'll just. Alcohol. So we're, yeah, we're only rescinding the marijuana, marijuana. application moratorium. Yes. We're, so we'll strike that. Strike that. Okay. We'll strike that language in the policy. Okay. If, if that's okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes. Is that wording of that motion fine for yes. what you're yes. doing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, motion by Peter, second by Melissa. Sir, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'll take care of that. Any opposed? Any mm -hmm. abstentions? It's unanimous. Nice. Whew. This and was just a long process. process. A long you know process, what? but it was really, this process. was really, I think our um, application process is really good. Yeah. Great you. work, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we couldn't, it couldn't, it was beautiful. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I, I do want to say that um, the way that we've ended up laying this out without fees and without licenses, we're not going to be duplicating anything that the Cannabis Commission does. We're just going to be doing our piece of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that makes it easier for the um, applicants as well. So I think that's good. OK. Awesome. All right, moving right along. Next item, policy discussion, second reading, revised SciTech charge. Bob Dwyer is here to make some comments. Is he? Oh. Yeah, he's on, he's on Zoom. Zoom. Oh. Oh, okay. Brian's there too. Good evening. Good evening. Let me uh, get my uh, right place in the packet. Mm. My computer's working yet. All right. Um, do, is there anything the board or Anne anything you want to say before I take comments from Mr. Dwyer? Um, well, the uh, the SciTech committee itself, there are some recommended languages that the full committee hasn't seen yet that um, we are going to discuss Thursday. Um, I haven't had a chance to have conversation with the SciTech. I was unavailable at the last committee meeting um, to make comments on some of those recommended changes. So, uh, and I'd like to have that opportunity because I think some of the language that's recommended that I've just seen today is there's some redundancy in it. Um, overall, I think what we presented, what was presented originally, is is pretty much on target with um, as a revised the charge, draft. The the revised draft okay. that was yeah. Um, there's a little bit of additions that uh, the site tech committee would like to recommend but again I've I've only seen I saw it today I got it today so I haven't had a chance to review it or talk to the site tech about reasons why they're making those recommendations okay all right so um, Bob has the has the site tech committee itself taken a vote to make recommendations on the change or have you just had informal discussions about the change we had, um, first of all, uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity to appear and apologies for not being uh, uh, there in person. Um, uh, we were, um, and I was operating under the impression that, uh, that your second reading was going to occur in, at the next meeting in September. Uh, if, uh, if I thought uh, you needed a lot of input tonight, I would have tried to call a meeting of our committee uh, last week so we could have something for you that could go and have gone in the packet last uh, uh, last uh, Friday, I guess, when you put your agenda together. Um, but we did, uh, uh, two of us uh, basically have gone back and forth with a draft based on the recommendations from our last meeting, the one that Anne-Marie was unable to attend. Uh, and we have a, uh, a draft that has gone back and forth that Anne-Marie just got. And as she said, <clears throat> we have not been able to discuss this in, in committee and vote on it. We will do that on Thursday, presuming we can get a quorum together. Uh, one issue has been between vacations and one member is out sick with COVID right now. 
Uh, we were on the cusp of whether or not we could have gotten a quorum together last week and may not get it together this uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, let's pray for good health for the uh, one member. Um, but I, I, I'll just talk generally about the uh, the kinds of suggested additions we would like to. Uh, can can uh, I hold you? Put... Can I hold you off on on this? Sure. I, I I don't think that we have any hurry on this, right? No, I, I no. mean I I don't want to offend you by saying you know thank you for coming, but if you're not quite right, if I'd known this, I would have just deferred the item. I I thought I thought you'd had time to look at it. Uh, my, I I would prefer that you guys have your opportunity to finalize your discussion and comments and get those comments to us prior to a meeting so that we can kind of read through them and think about them and then we'll we'll just schedule schedule this reschedule the second reading when you you're ready to talk to us is is that fair Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I, I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and listen to something that I'm no, no, no offense, but I don't want to sit here and listen to something that isn't final and it's just taking up time. And I'm more than happy to wait. So if that's, no, I, I do want a motion to defer any action of the second. Yeah, so to, and, to and we can meeting. we can put it on this the meening of the 17th of September or, or 20. I mean, we'll we'll figure out when we're going to do it and be in more communication about when that's going to be. Okay, just for your scheduling, we expect. Uh, uh, if we can have a full committee meeting on Thursday by uh, just after that, we should be able to have a draft that we can uh, get approved by the committee and then uh, forward it to the, uh, the full select board for consideration. So thank you. That's good. I think the we'll 10th is our next meeting. Our meeting. I think our, we, we meet the 10th and the 24th. It's the 17th is sewer commissioner. So mm. the third yeah, is sewer. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thank, All right. Thank you. Before, Sorry guys. to, um, yeah, but. Um, no worries. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We'll just defer. Thank you, Wendy, yeah. for coming. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. We always love seeing you. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Any questions before huh. I leave? Mm -hmm. No, I think we're going to move right along. Um, yeah. Thank you so Motion much. Motion to though. defer action. Yeah, we'll just defer second reading to uh, second. Defer second reading. Motion by Peter, second by Melissa. Any discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. <coughs> discussion of annual goals after a select board retreat. <coughs> okay. Uh, I think we have minutes and then we have kind of a thing on the goals, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it's attached there to the go. minutes. Yeah. Um, After the minutes. Yeah. Page uh, 83. Yeah. Okay. Any comments or questions? Anybody have anything they want to say about this? Does it seem like a good representation? Mm. Yeah, look. Yeah, I'm good. happy it's, I mean, you know, aligns with the strategic plan. It's focused. Mm -hmm. We've prioritized things. <coughs> Minute to clear. Um, you know, uh, it's not all over the place. <laughs> <coughs> Can we take the marijuana one off since you voted it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right? Um, we can just say complete. Oh, like, that's uh, what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> we can say complete. complete. You know, right. I mean, because right. that was, uh, what does it's it nice say? It's nice to see a check mark. Polic <laughs> policies and procedures for competitively soliciting marijuana retailers and negotiating mm, yeah. host community agreements, HCA yeah. licensing requirements. Yeah. It was that, and it is. Uh, we need a it comment. We need a little c we need column a on the right that says complete. Right. <laughs> check this. I'm gonna check. Just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's off my list. Okay. Well, it's off your list, but I, I think it's important to leave it on a list that says it was complete. No, no I agree. I agree. I, I don't like to take it off and say, well, oh, what did we do? There's nothing on this list. We didn't mm. do anything. Yeah. 
So, um, and I, you know, do sorry. we want a motion to adopt the annual goals? Yeah. So yes. moved. Second. We'll put these in the final form and post them to the website and send them out to you and everything. Okay, awesome. Motion to adopt the annual goals by Peter, second by Melissa. Is there any discussion? Should we, as, I don't know, I guess it's just a practice and not really. I think it's important to review our, you know, at maybe in January or mid-year, to take a look again at where we're, we are with respects to our goals. Yeah, so what our we usually do in our January be prior to the town administrator's uh, I send evaluation, out, she sends I, out I send an update out in January. Update. I, I know, she sends, on this, okay. A, a progress on these goals. Um, pro yeah. okay. Like what she's been doing, right? Mm -hmm. That includes like what's been happening on the goals. Okay. But I, I mean, think do it's you want to formalize I, it to? I think we should an update. I know it's in this part of the. You want to have the, the update, like you want a January or February update. I think it's in, I think it's important to have an opportunity to have conversation with respects to you know before we get it you know <coughs> just prior to an eval or you know um, that we we need to have the conversation about how we are doing as a committee in reaching those goals, right? What, what can we do more? Are we doing enough? Are we directing the town administrator enough with respects to accomplishing these goals? I mean, just sort of a self-reflection, I think, is important, too. <coughs> um, uh, maybe we could adopt, we the annual, adopt the annual goals as mm -hmm. one thing, mm -hmm. and then as a second thing, say <coughs> periodic reviews of the goals to be every <coughs> just know, a mid-year item so-called mid-year review right okay or we'll do it every three months or period. i was gonna say no, every three. I, yeah i don't know if it has to be that frequent but i think it's three months goes by pretty to... fast before you know it. it's three then it's six you know it's nice to do <coughs> You know, a simple update goes a long way and because it, it, it's a town administrator in this direction. <clears throat> I'd rather not wait to six months. That's why every three months, I think, is pretty straightforward. And in and, and at the three month, if it's really not much to update, then so so be it. But and it could be just part of the, you know, DA's report, right? right? Yeah, the town administrator does usually have updates on these items on yeah. her report. Yeah. So let's if have I have something to share. If you yeah. have something to share, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think let's do I, I'm I think let's do a mid year review. Mm -hmm. Like end of January. <laughs> it's kind of tag it with the information though. I think that's what we did last. It was before the end of January that we got the town administrators. So and I personally and, like it a little bit more than that, but if that's what the board wants, I'll go well, along. Well we can it. always add something if we want to have a question on a particular thing. Because I'm going to be asking something later for a future agenda item that's time specific too. So, <coughs> okay. All right. So we have a motion to adopt the annual goals. We didn't second. Uh, it was motion by Peter and second by Melissa. Is there any further discussion? Oh. Seeing none. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> abstentions? And um, then, do we want? I mean, I'll take a motion. Whatever motion people want to make about. Um, updates on the goals. We make a motion that we do a mid-year update on the goals. Second. Motion by Melissa. Second by Anne Marie. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Town Administrator's report. Thank you. A um, couple of items for tonight. As you are aware, we experienced some extreme flooding yesterday afternoon at the Bourne Rotary. We have been in contact with MassDOT and shared a number of photos and videos with them. District 5 has confirmed that they will be looking <coughs> into the drainage <coughs> system and evaluating if any short or long-term adjustments are needed. There have been, there have also been a number of serious accidents on Sandwich Road recently, 
and MassDOT will be placing a sign board out to remind people to stay in the marked travel lanes. As many people are aware, Triple E has been reported in neighboring towns. The health department is monitoring the reports carefully and we are working with our partners at the county. People are encouraged to use insect repellent and be careful while outside. We are anticipating closing the splash pad and removing the swim floats in mid-September. We did not quite finish the Academy and Main Street intersection before Labor Day. We are working with the contractor to finish the stamping and dyeing of the pavement shortly after Labor Day and, and to determine a time that has the least impact to school buses and the Maritime Academy. DPW will post notice on message boards to alert drivers when the schedule has been reset. The Cape Cod Commission is working with the towns, including <coughs> Bourne, on an initiative to determine if there are housing types that can be pre-reviewed or pre-permitted at the local level to streamline additional, additional housing production while promoting multifamily options that fit within the historic aesthetic of Cape Cod. More information about this initiative can be found on the Commission's website and it will be a focus at the One Cape Summit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, minutes. Motion to approve the minutes of November second, twenty twenty one. And I think <laughs> there's only while. maybe two out of the five of us. No, three <laughs> out no three out of five. No, Melissa got on twenty two, so I was gonna say I don't think yeah. I was even oh, there for I, those. Yeah, just MJ and I may be the only ones. Yeah, here. but we can if we vote two in favor and three abstentions, it counts. It does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve the minutes of 11 2 2021 and 5 15 2024. Well, to just do one, right? Um, yeah, because we have to do the same. Yeah, so let's do the 11 2 2021 <coughs> motion by Peter. I'll second. Um, abstain. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. There's two opposed abstentions. Aye. Aye. Three. <laughs> Jean, Anne Marie, and Melissa. And a motion to approve the minutes of 5 15 2024. Sarah, second? Second. Motion by Peter, second by Anne Marie. Abstain. Uh, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Jean. Jean, yes. Motion passes four zero one. Okay. Committee reports. Um, I think I'll just add to my earlier comment. No, the MC3, there were several presentations that they had done um, the night of that meeting. So I don't know if those, I know Marlene did share them with the select board, but uh, do those go up public or do we, can we share them somehow or what do we, how would we just kind of let it, mm -hmm. give it to the select board and leave it there or? We don't maintain um, we don't maintain records of all of those meetings. Okay. So the I appreciate you sending that though. That was the, very informative. I liked. Yeah, it. I didn't. I forgot to send it, so I should have sent it over when I received it. I just didn't get to it. So thank you for doing that. I saw you sent it. I was like, oh, thank you, Marlene. Um, but yes. So um, they had several reports in there, and they're probably public record. I'll <coughs> see if I can locate them, uh, maybe, and I'll be able to share it with the public at the next meeting. But they had um, the housing presentation. There was a presentation there for the, um, the Cape Cod Canal and the bridges, and they were very informative, so I'll find out and share it next meeting. Thank you. Anybody else? I went to the veterans. <coughs> uh, trustees of the Veterans Community Building today, and um, they have uh, um, elected Donnell Beals as chair now, um, and they are going to um, be planning um, to do a walkthrough with the building and talk about capital projects, if there's anything that they feel they're going to want to recommend. So uh, that's it. Okay, uh, correspondence. <laughs> One item on the list. A, Jay Knowles, talent back form. 
Thank you. Uh, future agenda items related to correspondence or other items for future discussion? Yes, um, I would like to just request for a future agenda item or just update the board on the process of um, uh, identifying a process for, to, to go into negotiations with the town administrator uh, on her contract. Her contract is up June 30th, 2025. And before you know it, it gets up on you and all of a sudden you realize that it's, you know, it's- Yeah, we have that planned in the works, I think. Executive session on September 10th. Yeah, so we have the town council coming to discuss, uh, town, Chris Brown's coming to discuss it with us okay, on yeah. September 10th. I think it's just, you know, just process, because I know it after a while, you forget, and all of a sudden it gets too close, and I don't want to, you know. Do we have uh, anything for September 17th? No. That's the sewer commissioners. Well, I'm going to have to have you, we'll talk about She's it. in Italy. I'm in Italy. Mm. Well, we're in trouble because I'm going to be sleeping. <laughs> I'm going to have we, surgery we, that day. We so. actually uh, might, but there may not be a need for a meeting, to we be may honest. not yet a meeting. Okay. I just we want don't to ask while anything, we're all together. We don't so have anything yeah. pressing, which is why we wanted to make sure the rates got done. So it may be entirely possible that you don't need to meet as sewer commissioners on the 17th. Okay. I just want to make sure because I knew I've, if you're not going to be here either as vice chair, then that would be. Yeah. I'm. I'm Probably would have access to Wi-Fi. You could so. have, the, you know, that's true. You could zoom in. Very true. It would be like. Well, let's. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll play it by ear. I just want to make sure I brought it up now. <laughs> These two weeks we will be here before. We could also do like a 6:30 meeting if there's something that comes. If up. there's something critically pressing, we can reschedule it for an off night. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm All right. glad I that's mentioned good. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but I would like to um, have the sewer commissioners' meetings included on our schedule of meetings. On the select board? On the select board. Okay. Just because it helps. I can it's do like that. having it in one place because so that we. It was completely off my radar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, well, it was a, you know. Yeah. I just have a habit the of perfect storm. the town I didn't calendar get the email. all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel so bad for coming in at 10 seconds. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> all right. I think that does it. I will entertain a Thank motion to read. Second. Motion by Anne Marie, second by Jean. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. <laughs>